सो हे गाइज वेलकम टू द चैनल लर्न कम्पेटेटिव प्रोग्रामिंग विद कोड शेफ सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू लर्न कम्पेटेटिव प्रोग्रामिंग एंड गेट अ गुड होल्ड ऑन डेटा स्ट्रक्चर्स एंड एलगोथम दिस इज द राइट प्लेटफॉर्म फिल एवरी वीक देर आर मेनी वीडियोज रिगार्डिंग द एडिटोरियल्स ऑफ द कोड शेफ कॉन्टेस्ट एज वेल एज वेरियस वीडियोज विच विल एनहेंस योर स्किल्स ऑन कॉम्पेटेटिव प्रोग्रामिंग सो इफ यू आर न्यू टू द चैनल दैन प्लीज डू सब्सक्राइब द चैनल एंड ऑन द बेल नोटिफिकेशन सो माई सर्स श्रायू जैन एम अ कोड शेफ एजुकेटर एंड द टॉपिक दैट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी टूडे इज क्यू डेटा स्ट्रक्चर Okay, guys. So now let's start the understanding of the data structure queue, right? So again, we'll go to the same process that we have done in Stack. So if you have not watched the Stack portion, so it's advisable to watch the Stack portion also, right? So let's start it. So what is a queue? A queue is a container data structure. We have already explained this terminology in Stack, but once again, we'll do that. What is a container data structure? Like a simple container that we see in our daily life. a container data structure is a data structure which stores some data in a particular fashion a particular entity of data right so a queue is also a type of that data structure which a container data structure which stores data in which manner in fifo manner what is fifo first in first out in stack we have studied that it is a lifo right last in first out but queue is a fifo data structure that is first in first out So, what is this terminology? First in, first out. We'll go into the detail of that, right? So, here let us see the real world example. You have already seen, like outside the movie theater or any other place, the uh, the queue of people. Generally, we term that as a queue of people. So, the person is standing uh, in a form of queue, right? So, what? Uh, how? A um, like. Let, let's take an example of. Uh, place like a theater where all of them are standing to get a ticket so the first person who entered the queue will be first served first right so let's say that this person is entering first right so uh, right from the starting uh, this is the movie ticket counter and he gets the ticket first and then after that the second person who entered will get the second ticket the third person who entered this get the third ticket right so this uh this structure in which the first uh data or the first thing which entered first into the queue will be served first is termed as fifo first in first out the first one who enters uh the queue will be first out of that queue as well so this is what the basic idea of a uh, queue is right and there are some terminologies which are uh, associated with the queue so let's see uh, all of them uh there are many more things right in the queue but let's stick on to the basics and see what are the basic operations uh, with the with respect to queue right so this is known as n queue the data which enters uh in the queue is termed as n queue right this is the one term we'll go into the details of that that how we form this n queue what is the logic behind this n queue everything right but here are some introduction to the terminologies similarly a data which is going out of the queue is known as dq right so here we can see that first this person is entered to the queue right so it is enqueued to the queue and then after the he got the ticket he'll be out of the queue so then it will be termed as dq right he is dqed from the queue right so this is the basic thing of enqueue and dq the second thing is back which denotes the point where the data uh, is entered into the queue right that term is known as the back and from which the data is uh, removed from the queue is known as the front right so the, always the data is removed from the front of the queue and the data is entered at the back of the queue right so we'll get these members also in the queue right so these are some four basic operations so this is all some basic stuff regarding the queue uh, now let's proceed towards understanding in detail about these operations and then following with the code of this particular queue data structure so let's move Okay, guys. So now let's start understanding the operations on queue, right? And then we'll code these out, right? So let us consider a simple array, and that array we are modifying it as a queue, right? So what are the operations that we have in queue? Is n queue, d queue, is empty and is full, right? So in the stack, what we had was push and pop. Instead of push and pop, we use a more precise term that is n queue, right? So what n queue represent? That means adding. the data to the queue that simply means push that we used in stack the terminology we used in stack dq means removing the data from the queue the pop terminology that we used in stack right and is empty and is full are the same uh, terminologies that we used in stack to verify that whether the stack is empty or full respectively right now let's start with the nq function right so what nq function does first of all let us visualize that this is a queue and we are maintaining a two pointers that is f and r 
F means front and R means rear, right? So what we are doing is we are entering the data from the rear and we are removing the data from the front. That's what we discussed, right? So the first operation that we used is Angular. Suppose that I want to add a data that is five to the queue, right? So how I can do that? First of all, I need to check that whether the queue is full or not. If the queue is full, that means we cannot add the data. We'll, so we'll simply return that we cannot add the data to the queue since the queue is already full. Another check, if the queue is empty, if the queue is empty, initially the front uh, and the rear are pointing to minus one, right? Because the queue has nothing in it, right? So what we will do, if the queue is empty, then we'll make F is zero and R is zero, right? So we'll make F and R both as zero and at the rear end, at the R, we'll mark it the data, right? So what will be the data? First of all, we'll increase them from minus one to zero and at Q0, we have the data. That means we have entered five. We have entered five. Or let's make it simply in the between somewhere so that we have more space. So let's say we have five. Now F is zero and R is zero, right? So this is the NQ operation. Now let us again say that we want to enter three over here, right? So the stack is not empty yet. Right, so stack is not empty. So we'll verify that what how we are verifying is empty. Right, so we'll see it afterwards. Uh, so stack is not empty. So third condition hits. Right, what we'll do? Simply we'll increment the R. The R is incremented from zero to one, and we'll enter the data in the R. Right, we'll enter the data in the R. So the R is incremented from zero to one, and we are simply incrementing the R. So this is how we are doing it. R was pointing to zero here. Now R is pointing to one here, right? And we are making the data three over there, right? So this is how the NQ operation works. We are incrementing the R, the rear portion, and the front is in, at the position zero only, right? The front is at the position zero only. So what happens when we want to dequeue? So this was the NQ operation, right? What happens when we want to dequeue it, right? That is removing the data from the queue. So first of all, we'll check. Here that if the queue is empty if the queue is empty that means we cannot remove any data from the queue right so first thing we will to check that if the queue is empty we will simply return that there is no data present in the queue the next condition is if f is equal equal to r that means front and uh, rear are both uh, on the same position that means that ultimately the queue is empty right ultimately the queue is empty these both bounds to the same conditions right so here if we take about the is empty condition the is empty condition is only that that if the front is equal to minus one or if the r is equal to minus one that that means the queue is empty but here we can see one more case where the front and r uh, rear are collapsing with each other they are at the same position that also means that the queue has nothing left inside that right simply what we will do we will make front as minus one and rear as minus one that means the queue has become empty so we'll make those positions so right front is equal to minus one and r is equal to minus one that condition is checked now right otherwise what we will do what we will do is that we'll increment the front we'll increment the front so how we'll do uh, like let us say that we want to dequeue something from the queue so front was pointing to zero here right so front was pointing to zero so first operation is that if i want to dequeue it from the queue that means firstly five should be removed from the queue so since the front was pointing to zero only now the front is incremented to one right so the rear was also at one and the front is also at one that means this data this data is now vanished because there is nothing to track over this data now front is also pointing here at this three and the rear is also pointing here at this three there is nothing to be left to see at this particular data that means it is automatically removed so how we can do this is just by incrementing the front the dq operation works will increment the front only for that right so now this data has become nothing for us right only three is left in the queue correct so this is how a dq operation works this is how a dq operation works right and the rest two conditions are very simple that is the is empty condition and the full condition so i've already explained to you what is is empty if the front is equal to minus one and if the rear is also equal to minus one that means they are at the same position minus one that means the queue is empty then we'll return true otherwise we'll return false so this is the operation for uh, this is the logic for is empty function and for the is full function if the rear has reached the size of the array 
right so because we are making the modifications in the array so if rear is reached to the size of the array that means the array is full that means a queue is full right that means our queue is full so that is a simple terminology basically we are concerned with the logic for these two operations that is nq and dq right and these are some helper functions which are required for the completion of these functions right so in the most general cases when you are using the queue data structure right when you are using the terminology queue only like in the competitive programming uh, tests and all uh, you directly use queue you need not to form the array and then use these type of then write these operations you are already provided with the inbuilt queue operations so directly you can modify these changes but we are studying here to just analyze how the internally queue is working right so that is the main logic of explanation for these functions right so now let's uh, we have seen the example also that how the things are working right so now let's jump on to the code and more effectively clear that how we'll code these all things into the code of c++ so let's jump on to that okay guys so now let us quickly understand how we are writing the code that uh, about the approach that we have discussed about the operations that we have discussed right so uh, we are using the code chef ide to write the code right and uh, in the next videos uh, when we solve the problem of q we'll gen uh, we'll uh, directly use the functions the inbuilt functions that c++ provide us here just we are understanding how we can just develop the logic how the inside of q is working right okay so now let's see so this is the main function what we're trying to do is first we're trying to enqueue the data right so we have enqueued three data that is 10 20 and 30 then we are printing the queue that how the queue looks like and after that we are dequeuing the data again printing the queue and we are showing that whether the queue is full or whether the queue is empty right so this is how this is what we are doing in the main function that is a driver code now let us look at the functions that we have till now the first let us look at the nq function so the first thing is we are checking that whether the queue is full or not if the queue is full then we are mentioning that the queue is full right so this uh, this is full function is uh, written over here right so what is this is full function if the queue size is full uh, we are taking the array of size 10 right so if the queue if the rear if the rear is equals equals 10 then means we need to return true that means our queue is full otherwise we'll return false right so that's what we have discussed as well right so this is uh, the simple is full function the return type is bool that means we need will have a true or a false value right so if it is uh, full then we'll return uh, the queue is full otherwise if the queue is empty then what we will do the front and the rear uh, the global variables are initialized to minus one so what we will do we'll make them zero first then what we will do at the rear part we'll make the data right so the array of rear will be equal to data right so this is the uh, step when the queue is empty right otherwise in any other condition uh, we'll increment the rear portion and then we'll mark the data at that particular rear uh, position right so array of rear will be equal to data so this is the simple nq function right the dq function first we'll check whether the queue is empty or not right so uh, the condition is if uh, uh, it is equal to minus one the front and the rear right so what is the condition of is empty if the front and the rear is minus one then return two otherwise return false right so we'll make it as empty otherwise if the front and the rear became equal that means that the queue is uh, of size zero so what we will do we'll make front as minus one and rear as minus one because that ultimately makes the queue empty right otherwise what we will do will simply in dq will simply increment the front that's what we have discussed right simply incrementing the front makes that value of no use right because we are marking the queue from the uh, front to rear in that particular interval only right so if front is incremented that means these values are neglected they are of no use right so simply we'll increment the front for the dq operation and we have discussed right is empty and is full uh, because these are the helper functions for this nq and dq now uh, the print queue is simply right starting from the front till the rear we'll printing the values in the array uh, as they are of queue right so these are pretty all the functions that we are using in developing the queue so let's try to run this let's try to run this particular operation and let's see what are the output that we are getting right so first 10 20 30 that means the Q should be of 10 20 and 30 right so let's see yeah it is successfully executed and the Q that we are getting is 10 20 30 right then what we do we DQ right so first uh, entered is 10 so 10 should be removed and then in this next DQ operation the 20 should be removed right so the only element that should be remaining in the Q is 30 right so if we print the Q after that the only element in the Q is 30 
right so it is working now we again printed the queue we are checking that since only one uh, element is there in the queue and the size of the queue is 10 so uh, uh, we are checking that whether the queue is full or not so it will return zero the queue is not full and then we again dequeue the element so all the elements are removed from the queue the queue has become empty right so we have uh, dequeued the last element as well 30 so now the queue is empty so we are verifying that is empty function is working or not so we call this function and it is returning one that means the queue is empty so this is pretty all the basic idea of queue that how the inside uh, functionality of queue is working right so in the next uh, videos we'll see that how we can just perform the uh, questions with the inbuilt queue that c++ provide us right rather than just coding this much down every time for the queue this is not wiseful uh, as competitive programming is, uh, is concerned but for developing a knowledge uh, for the data structure it is very important right so we have seen that now in the coming videos we'll just solve the question for the queue so thanks a lot guys for watching the video if you like the content then please do hit the like button and if you want to know any updates regarding the videos coming out of the channel then you can join the telegram group the link to the telegram group is in the description and feel free to write your thoughts and any problem you want that should come onto the channel in the comment section below i'll see you in the next part